Screws and bolts are simple options for fastening two pieces of material together. As you might have guessed, the secret is in the threads. But how would you go about making your own? In this video, we'll go over the tap and die, a set of tools that allows you to make your own threads wherever you need them. A tap is a tool that cuts threads into a hole so that a bolt can be screwed into it. While they look similar to bolts, taps are typically made of high-speed steel that have long channels ground into the sides, leaving gaps in the threads. As the tap turns into a hole, these channels allow chips that are carved out of the material to break free and be ejected. Taps come in three main styles. Plug is the most common tap for general purposes. It has a slight taper, but allows for threading almost to the bottom of a blind hole. Taper taps start narrow and then taper to a full thread width. This means it's fairly easy to start when threading into a hole, but they may need to be turned farther in order to form a fully threaded hole. Bottoming taps are for forming threads in the full length of a blind hole. It's recommended to use a taper or plug tap first to form the initial threads. For every bolt, there is a corresponding tap with the matching diameter and number of threads per inch. Similarly, for each tap there is a corresponding drill bit size that you should use to drill the initial hole. These relationships are typically printed on the packaging for the tap, or they can be found through a quick internet search. If you're not sure what thread count a bolt is, you can use a screw pitch gauge to match one of its blades to the thread profile. Make sure you secure the piece to be tapped. This is one of the most important parts. Taps are very brittle, so if your tap or material moves too much, it will break off the tap in the hole. To avoid that, it's a good idea to use a vise to secure your material and align the hole so it's either directly below you or directly in front of you. Since taps are just bits, they need a tool to turn them. The trusty tap wrench is specifically made for this. Insert the square end of the tap into the adjustable jaws of the tap wrench and twist the handle that tightens the jaws. If you don't have enough clearance for the handle, you can use a T-wrench. These smaller alternatives are great anywhere a normal tap wrench won't fit. Now here comes the tricky part. Line up the tap of the hole, making sure that it's completely perpendicular to the material. Apply slight pressure to the tap and begin turning the wrench. You should feel the cutting threads begin to catch, so double check that the tap is straight and do not force the tap where it may break. After you've made a couple of full revolutions in the material, you can stop applying pressure. From here, after every full turn of the tap, give it a half turn in reverse. This will break the chips off and clean out the thread. Repeat this until the tap is completely through the material. Once you're done, turn the tap out. Blow the chips out and then test it out. If you're tapping into a soft material like aluminum, brass, or cast iron, you won't need lubrication. But if you're tapping steel, use some cutting oil to help out. A die is basically the inverse of a tap. It cuts threads onto the outside diameter of a rod. The rod's diameter will dictate which die you use. To prepare the rod for threading, just file or grind a bevel onto the end so it's easier to turn the die onto it. After you've selected your die, you'll need to put the die into the die stock, which is similar to a tap wrench. Most die stocks have a set screw on the side, which is then screwed in to tighten the die into the stock. Rather than try and spin the rod onto the die, we'll spin the die onto the rod. That means that the rod will have to be held securely, ideally in a vise. This also keeps the rod straight while spinning the die onto the end. Cutting the thread is almost identical to the tapping process. Make sure the die is aligned with the rod and apply pressure and then turn it onto the rod. Once the initial threads have been formed and the die is caught, you can remove pressure and continue turning, remembering to give it a backward turn once every revolution to break the chips. Once you've threaded the rod to the desired length, give it a test. 